You like the music, huh? It's you. <laughs> nice one. It's <laughs> trying to stop. So it's just going to welcome the folks who might be joining us tonight. Welcome to all of you who are already in the audience joining us. Just giving you a little bit of jimping music, traditional music from Dominica. It's not my music, I don't have any rights to it, but it's our music in Dominica, so I'm just enjoying some of it and hoping that wherever you are, you are enjoying a bit of it. So welcome, I invite you to share the live with somebody who might still need to join us tonight for discussion. We're about to have a very meaningful discussion tonight with a special guest. And by now you would probably see the name across the screen. Mrs. Samonia Paul Roll is gonna be our guest tonight and should be a very interesting discussion. So please share the live with somebody, ask them to come on and join us. Yep. I think it's needed to start with some jumping music. Yeah, if you're in there, you can say hi to me so I can know that you're around. So far, I've not seen, I can see some people online, but say hello. Somebody, <laughs> good evening to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Enjoy the gym thing. It's so amusing. Saying your name properly, welcome. I see Pauline J. Douglas. Thank you for being here. You could be related to, I, I guess, the late uh, Rosie Douglas. Yes, um, Curly, I see you. Jappy Abus, hey, Anne, welcome, welcome. Yes, just enjoying a little bit of jinping and welcoming all of you. Yes, I DM for Dominica, Dominica Strong. Welcome, guys. So, tonight. We just hold on one music a little. We just have that play in the background for a little bit as I talk to you. Yes, greetings, Joanne Roll Carrot. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, I see you checking out your sister in law there, so that's nice. <laughs> welcome, hi, Nanan. Welcome. So, tonight, I just want to begin maybe by just letting you know a few things that has gone down in the week. Um, it's been a good week in, in our town, in, in the town of Portsmouth and in Dominica by extension. Um, we have been able to see to fruition the elections, as it's called the Portsmouth Town Council election, and a number of individuals got elected. Um, if you would remember, for the past few weeks, I've been sort of focusing on um, elections. I spoke with a number of people who, volunteer nominees rather, who um, gave themselves up and, you know, in a willingness to serve the community in their capacities as councillors. So hopefully those who were elected will eventually um, be inaugurated and come on board and do the necessary work. Hi, Leslie and Walter, and welcome. Good evening to you. I'm happy to know that you are locked in to support Ammonia. That's great. 
Leonard Paul, good night. Maybe that's Amonia's brother, cousin or something. Yes, he says yes. <laughs> All right. So that's great. No, I don't call it Amonia. I've always called her Miss Paul. But anyway, it's weird having to call people by their first name. I'm not used to this. <laughs> but we'll talk about her a little in a little bit and talk with her. Um, also to tell you that uh, today, today, the if you've not heard of it, there is a school called Academ Academics School of Learning right here in Portsmouth. And they held their first ever graduation ceremony um, today, earlier this earlier today. And I must say it was a very solemn moment. It was joyful, but also solemn. Um, they were able to pay tribute to one of the late students. His name was Yuri Libla. And I can tell you it was very moving. His family was there, his parents and little sister. And they were there. And it was a really heartbreaking moment when they were called up uh, to, to receive what Yuri would have received if he was alive, which were some awards for his excellence, I think, in information technology and another uh, subject area. I had the distinct honor of um, hosting the event, and I am very grateful that, you know, I was seen as fit to do that. So it was a pleasure having done that. I want to extend congratulations to Mr. Herman Williams, who is the director, Heman rather, Heman Williams, the director of um, academics and also the dean of academic students, of sorry, of, of um, academics rather, the dean of academics at the school. I want to congratulate him and his sister as well, with Mrs. Vashe, who works along with him, and to congratulate all the students, truly, who all the graduates who today worked with all of their diplomas and their associate degrees in various fields. So we are very proud of them and very proud of that institution. It's the first tertiary, you could say, locally grown, homegrown tertiary education, um, educational institution in, in Portsmouth, maybe even in the north. And so we're truly grateful for, for that and to have such a school. So we invite you to think about it. Go online, you can check out the page, Academics School of Learning, Academics with a big X at the end, School of Learning, and you can know more about that school. So we want to pick them up in a, in a special way. And as you see, I started with a little bit of Jinping music there. It's our traditional music. And you would know I, by last week realized that we were into the independent season. And last week was National Day of Prayer, both um, Saturdays and Saturday and Sunday. And so tomorrow, God's Fair, we will have what is called the actual official opening of our independence, our 42nd independence anniversary. So I'm wearing a little something picture, I think just a T-shirt. Last year's t-shirt, actually, um, for our independence. It's not too bright, but it's just to pay homage to my land, to my island. I was very happy to sing the national anthem today at the graduation. A young lady um, did very well. Her name is Vernice, and she sang that national anthem quite lovely. I was happy to be part of it and to join in just singing and paying homage to Dominica, our homeland. So welcome, guys. Thank you, Marvelyn. Thank you for that. I see your comments there. Um, hi, Donald, Donald Rowe, my brother in birthday. We have the same birthday, so hope you had a good one, bro. And of course, the husband of Mrs. Amonia Paul Rowe. So he's also there. So let's go straight to our guest who is um, awaiting. I'm going to bring her in. Um, before we even talk to her, I will read a citation about her. So I'm going to pause our music. As a matter of fact, completely stop it so you can have full attention um, of what we're saying tonight. All right, let's welcome her. Hello. Hi, good evening. Good evening, good evening. how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. It's good to have another Paul here. You know, of course. <laughs> I'm honored to be in your company. <laughs> well, I am honored to be in the company of Mrs. Amonia Paul Rowe. And I'll tell you one of the reasons why I said that. Sometimes I go to places and people ask me, or even when I'm introduced, and people ask me, I'm on your Paul? <laughs> yeah, very much so. Uh, from the time they hear the Paul and the, the last, the first name ends with an, with an E, mm. people come up and say, if I'm, I'm on your Paul. And I always have to say, no, uh, my name is Cesarina. I'm from Portsmouth, but I'm on your Paul is from Peebush. I understand why you would think I am on your Paul. <laughs> Because I don't see them we are related. You, well, you see, here we go. The, I get that question all the time. Are you all related? Then there is a yeah. Jefferson Paul, and there is a people thought Jefferson Paul was my husband. 
And then I have to tell them it's my brother in faith. And it's just a lot of stuff like that. So, <laughs> so we're a family, we're Paul's. And I'm very grateful um, to be able to get the opportunity to talk with you tonight on something so distinct, so special, um, something people might not have heard before. Um, and also a perspective rather that we never would have heard if you don't come out to share it tonight. I was, and I'll say just to give an intro that I think I was moved when I was listening to that program on DBS radio, probably about the, 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 the date of his, of his death, which was the 1st of October. And um, when I say he's, I'm referring to, to the late Rosie, Roosevelt Rosie Douglas, as we call, everybody called him affectionately Rosie. And so we will be saying Rosie tonight, not with any disrespect, but just with affection um, for the person and what he was called. And I remember hearing you, you called, and for a very brief moment, and you said some things that moved me. And I was like, oh my God, she needs to tell her side of her knowledge of this man that everybody talks about, you know, in terms of his high level, prime minister, going here, doing that. But you knew, you knew this person probably better than a lot of people, a lot of us out there. And so um, we will talk about him. But before that, if you would allow me to read your citation to the folks so they get an idea of um, who you are, a little bit about your bio, okay? Sure, thanks. Right, so I'm gonna do that. All right, so folks, Amonia Paul Roll, before she was Roll, <laughs> grew up in the community of Pebush in a family of 10 siblings, with 10 siblings. Her parents were both farmers and her mother later became a highly successful huckster and or trader plying the route of Antigua, Anguilla, and St. Martin. As a child, she was known to be very inquisitive and was an avid reader. In her fifth year at the Portsmouth Secondary School, she gave birth to her only child, Amanda Massicott, who we call Amy. Two years after her daughter's birth, she met Rosie Douglas and her life changed. Rosie went on to pay for her college education and immediately after successfully completing college, she proceeded to work for him as his personal secretary a position she held in excess of 10 years. That journey with Rosie proved to be the, the best university she attended as it offered countless opportunities for improving her self-confidence and building her professional network. These opportunities included countless occasions for international travel, including representing the Labour Party at international events such as the 13th World Festival of Youth and the Students in, sorry, you know, let's get on. Okay, of Youth and Students in Pyongyang in 1989 in North Korea, the Mathaba Conference in Tripoli, Libya, and some regional events as the Caribbean Women for Liberation Conference held in, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Ammonia served as one of the core team members of the Pebush constituency that was critical in the election of Rosie in his inaugural tenure in parliament and served on the executive of the Labour Party for many years. Other team members included Nathan Barnes, Morgan Christian, Abednego Dupi, Eutychus Fabian, Clem Joseph, Edison Joseph, among others. She is a founding member of the Cambridge Cultural Group and was the first to organize a, child a children's belly workshop in the North during the time she served as district development officer, introducing very young children to the artistic skills of the late Rubelin Walter. Mrs. Amonia Paul Rule is currently the social development planner in the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Planning, Resilience, Sustainable Development in Dominica, and has recently returned from a four year engagement as social and gender analyst on the Enhanced Country Poverty Assessment Project with the OECS Commission in St. Lucia. She is a graduate of St. Xavier University in Canada and Brandeis University in the US. I hope I'm saying that one correct. She holds a master's degree in development economics and diplomas in social development and national development. And these were from, um, I think it's Fusing Kang College in Taiwan. 
Mrs. Roll has over 20 years of experience in social development, social development work, including having served as the district development officer for the North and the Southwest districts for more than 10 years. She's a certified business continuity manager. She's also certified in the Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance, and that's with of OFDA and USAID in areas of risk management and assessment. Her skills and competencies are vast and varied and included in being a policy analyst, gender analyst, social analyst, social scientist and researcher, cultural enthusiast, community volunteer, popular theater animator, skilled in events management and organization. Most importantly though, Ammonia is a mother, a grandmother, and wife, and a family person, roles that she takes very seriously. She's a strong spiritual person and believes that she can do anything through Christ Jesus who strengthens her. The challenges that she has had to confront have been the foundation for the person that she is today. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you here, I present to you the very distinguished Mrs. Ammonia Paul Rowe. Yay, let's go, put your hands together guys for it. <laughs> we cannot hear you, but you can put an applause in the chat if you want. So Mrs. Rowe, quite a heavy bio there if you ask me. You say it's a short one. I believe it is because if you had to chronicle everything that you have done, we would not have enough pages, I'm sure, here tonight to read or time to read all of it. But you have, Look, Kathy say, my people, Miriam is in the crowd, uh, Sophie. There's a number of people are just happy and are waiting to hear from you. So I've said a lot. Can you tell us from your heart then, um, what does, what, what Rosie meant to you back in the day? And I'm sure even today. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Cesarina. And I want to say thanks to all our listeners tonight. Yes. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak um, because having worked with Rosie for quite a while, um, I don't think I ever had an opportunity to speak to any public forum on mm -hmm. my relationship with him or my experiences with him. So I really appreciate the opportunity to speak about, um, you know, my journey with Rosie and how he impacted my life. Um, it is not often that you come across a person who can just dramatically change your life, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so for many people in Dominica, I suppose, um, they probably may have had similar, a similar experience as I did when I came, when I met with Rosie for the first time. And that just changed my life. Um, there's a saying that goes, a leader takes people where they want to go. Mm -hmm. A great leader takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but ought to be. Mm -hmm. And to me, that saying epitomizes who Rosie was. Because when Rosie met with you or when you, you, you came into his presence, he made you feel important. He saw in you things that you couldn't see within yourself. So mm -hmm. he, I don't know, he had a, set, a good sense of discernment of people, um, your potential, etc. And so when I met with Rosie, he just changed the course of my life. Mm -hmm. I met with him at a time when um, I just had my daughter because my bio said that I, I got pregnant in FIFO, right? Yeah. And I'm saying so um, to say that Back then, when you got pregnant, that was it for you. You you know, you couldn't think about anything else. You finish it done. Yeah. So <laughs> I got pregnant in fifth form. Mm -hmm. And after I had Amy, I met Rosie. And Rosie said, one of his first conversations with me was about my education. And he said, no, you can't stay home and stuff. No, you need to go back to school. I'm like, like, you can't stay home and whatever. Very and so that was the conversation we, we had. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, he, he was coming to pay which and stuff. And remember, I was young as 18, huh? Yeah. Um, he was coming to play which, and at the time he was trying to organize a cultural exchange between the ballet, um, ballet, um, people who dance ballet and play which with Cuba. Okay, and um, so he came to my mother's home frequently because he was trying to encourage my mother to go to Cuba. <laughs> now, you know, back in those days, Cuba was a bad word, yes. Communists, yes. they will, they, you don't go to church, um, you know, Cuba, Cuba. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> It took a bit of, um, you know, coming, 
every day speaking and so on. And so that is how I ended up getting to know him because he was coming at home all the time, trying to convince my mother to go to Cuba and so on and so forth. And so when when we developed that relationship, he ended up spend, um, sending me to the college. Mm -hmm. I went there and successfully completed um, college. So yeah. that was a stepping stone for me. Um, I don't know if I should just go on or if you want. You want yes, to you, can, you, can, you can go ahead. But um, maybe before that, what, what, just to clarify, so you did go back to school and complete school while in fifth form, am I correct? Yes, I actually, some of the teachers told me, no, I shouldn't stop school, um, go yeah. back to school. So I went and, and took some classes and so on. I attended some classes and stuff. Mm. And and so, yes, I went back to school. And even then, after the results came out, I wasn't satisfied with some of the results. So I had to do some of those subjects um, mm. yeah. privately. Um, mm. And I started there my past. And that was how I got into college. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. I think, that's, I think it's important to capture that aspect of your life because there are many people who might be out there, young ladies um, who may have, Dropped out of school because of pregnancy, although lately it doesn't happen that much like before because it's yeah. more people and people are more yeah. understanding. But I mean that that experience um has affected many people um in maybe around your age group and during the time that you went to school and some of them maybe never picked up themselves and go back to get and went back to get an education. Yeah. So it's really good that we capture that and let people understand that it's not the end of your life. If exactly that you know? Yeah, and the thing about it too is sometimes you meet a challenge, but it doesn't necessarily have to to be. Uh, you can get a positive out of that particular challenge that you you have been confronted with, and That's so it. I did not let that deter me from pursuing my my studies. Right. And even when I remember when I ended up on the campaign, campaign platform with Rosie and so on, oh, that was one of my biggest memory. Oh, you go to school and you have a child and whatever, and so that was my memory on the platform, mm -hmm. you know. But I still. It, it, you know, yeah, right today. So you're a strong person. You have to be strong to endure <laughs> pregnancy first, and then, of course, the queen, so to speak, from all people who are often, you know, ready to remind us of where we came from and all the bad things that we may have done, or, or what they consider bad things that we may have done in our lives. So it's it's really it says a lot about your your own tenacity as a person, as a woman, as a young um, lady. Then, and you're still young. I mean, look at you. You're still young. So, I mean, the point is, it does speak a bit about your own um, strength, personal strength as well. And I want to also capture that as being something about you that people should note. Yeah. Um, yes, thanks. I think mm -hmm. so. And um, but I think too, Rosie had a lot of influence on me in that regard as well. Because yeah. even when I I was still young and not sure about myself and and still not full in confidence, self-confidence and so on. Mm -hmm. He put so much trust and confidence in me. And sometimes I wonder why he you know, he did send me to do things like send me overseas to a, 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 um some international um meeting. Meeting and I'm saying and he would actually prep me for those things. Eh? So he yes. was I'm going to an international meeting. We sit down and he says to me, um, this is what is going to happen. And he, he tells me some other things I should say. So back then in the 1980s, when he would send me to them, big thing, he would tell me about talk about the diaspora and so on and so forth. And uh -huh. now diaspora is a, a you know, come on, you know, now it's a big thing. Back yeah. then in the 1980s, Rosie used to tell me when I go talk about diaspora and so on, mm -hmm. you know, it was you. Um, and you, I mean, I I'm rubbing shoulders with ambassadors, with ministers, you know, from people. <laughs> traveling first class and, stuff yes. and going to these big meetings you know so i mean he saw something in me that i didn't know i had yes, yes. yes. he saw he saw leader and was able to i'm sure he was able to harness that leadership and as you said he trusted you and and i think you're you're raising on a point here that um many times we take for granted that even the young people and the people on the whole that we come across, sometimes we have to take a risk on them. We have to trust them and give them the opportunity to prove to themselves first, not necessarily us because we might recognize that they can actually do certain things that we don't um, yet give them to do, but tr and trust them with an opportunity and see them, you know, just blossom because they too, are surprised at what they, they are able to do. So so you're saying that, and you said something about Rosie earlier, that he saw the good in everybody and oh, yeah. always trying to make people feel important no matter who they were. So that, that was none of that. Rosie listened to people. 
Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who it was. You could be the prime minister of wherever, or yeah. the poor man with a, a really dirty clothes on torn up and roses. He would listen to you, actively listen to you, and have a conversation with you. And you mm-hmm. know he was listening to you. Mm-hmm. And to me, that that meant quite a lot. And mm-hmm. I think I've learned quite a bit from him in that respect, in terms of listening to people. It ma- doesn't matter where they come from, you know, just listen to them. And you communicate with people as well. He would communicate mm-hmm. with you in a way that you understood and you knew he was listening and you understood what he was saying. He was able to, Rosie could speak to well, dignitaries and so on, but he could also transition very easily and speak to, and even when he would use words that probably the vocabulary that you, you probably, the way he spoke to you, it made you understand what he was saying. Yeah. And so I thought that was really, that was one of the things that, that people felt, well, a lot of people just gravitated towards Rosie and, and were captivated by him. And he had some really good stories, life stories. <laughs> and that alone, those yeah. life stories alone, Yes. As I said, was a university because when he explained to you what he went through and all, you know, his time in Canada and so on, and at the time when he was here, he spoke a lot about um, the work he was doing in Africa with, with up against apartheid and so on. Um, I mean, that alone was just opening up your eyes to a world that you didn't, you you know, you didn't right. ever, you know, be able to, to go there, but he brought it to you. Yeah, because you said in your bio that once you met him, that was the be the best university that you ever attended. I mean, to, to describe a person, having met a person, as and, and the experiences that you got exposed to, um, having met this person as the best university you could ever attend. I mean, that says a lot. So can you share with us then some of the lessons that you would have grasped from that university um, over time? Maybe some oh, of yeah. the things, yes. All right, so so to me, some of the things I think I learned a lot, as I, I already um, mentioned, was listening to people, meeting them at, at their at their level, um, and giving credence to what they're saying, right? Another thing is, Rosie was a really good um, communicator, and so his ability to, to speak to different people at different levels and ensuring that they understood was important. So for me, yeah. Especially in the work that I do, um, when I speak to technical people, I know I can use certain language. Yes. When I'm speaking to general crowds, I know there are people of different capacities and, and, and abilities. I speak this as simple as I can so that I am reaching everybody and, and so on. So these are things that I have learned from Rosie. Yeah. Um, when um, well, During my time with Rosie, you know, Rosie, so when Rosie traveled, Rosie would come and Rosie would buy a lot of stuff clothes, African clothes and and, and all kinds of things. And when Rosie comes, women, women, women coming inside by Rosie for clothes and so on and things like that. Um we would have we would have shows, we would have African um shows. We did um African Liberation Day activities in Solitary, we did Queen shows and so on and so mm-hmm. forth. Um so he was a person that organized things and some of the people who came to him were people who criticized him and said all kinds of bad things about him. So <laughs> All those people saying, stop talking about you. Every time they come, you give them stuff. You know, Rosie, don't, even, you don't worry. Rosie, don't even worry with that. It doesn't yeah, matter. worry. Always yeah. kill off him, even if you treated him badly. Rosie was just a giving person. He he, he didn't hold any grudges. Yeah. He, I mean, the man was a lovable man. You know, he yeah. and so I learned a lot from him in terms of being able to to see beyond just. You know, yeah. the, what is in right in front of you, looking mm-hmm. further than that, looking beyond what is just in front of you. Because to me, I think um, he was a strategist. So yeah. he didn't just look at today, he was looking five years down the road and so on. So when we met with Rosie and he had his core of people with him, he nurtured you, he empowered you, he gave you the stories, but in giving yes. you the stories, he was kind of building like a movement because when you got through, you felt you were part of something and you, you felt as an important person, as a an important part of, of what was going on. Um, so he empowered you and he at the same time he trained you. So we would sit down and strategize, especially for the elections. Yes. Oh, we we knew who had to do what. So for the first election, <laughs> in favor, the church was campaigning full against Rosie. Yeah. The priest will tell you about communists and go vote for communists in the church. So Rosie's, one of our strategy was to go into the church and to see if we could touch the Porto Catholic and turn them around. So I had my role in the church, 
you know, as a member of the, 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 the um, I was on the committee. Yeah. And we had Cadios in there, we had Cyril in there, and we had to work on the elderly people and so on. So, you know, we got training, we got, we learned how to strategize and so on. Mm -hmm. And so those are things that I learned from Rosie as well. So you do not just look about, um, at, yeah. at this, yeah. no, yeah. look beyond, beyond that and plan. So you plan and you, and at mm -hmm. the same time you're building, you're, and you're empowering people. So mm -hmm. you're not just using people, but you're empowering them because you're giving yeah. them, you're giving them transferring skills that are very useful that they can use uh, in other ways and um, so i use those very skills to take me I really, love, I really love that you said that he was not just using people but he was actually empowering people because yeah. there is such a difference um especially you know there are times when we see certain leaders come um they, they, they emerge but they only know people when they need people but they don't necessarily stick to um the people as they should and empower them that they might be able now to go, as you said, develop transferable skills that they can apply even in the absence of these leaders themselves. Because I'm sure, I mean, if, if Rosie was here today, looking at who you've become, he would be extremely proud of you. Um, to look at the amount of knowledge that you have garnered, um, you've put yourself out there to get the education, to do the necessary things, to empower yourself as a woman, as as a Dominican, as a person giving back to our society today in the professional sense. I think he would be proud of you, most certainly. Actually, I know he was, because yeah. even when he became prime minister, he called me one day and he said, so I'm only, everybody's coming to my office. You're not coming to see your, your prime minister? <laughs> I, said, I said, Rosie, you don't worry that. I'm a public servant. I'll have to come and see you. Let all yeah. the come. I'll have time. But sadly, the only time I had to see Rosie after he got elected as prime minister was in Taiwan. Mm. He was in Taiwan and I was in Taiwan at the same time. Yeah. So he, he, I think he sent a vehicle to pick me up at, at my hotel to come and see him. And I spent some time with him in the hotel and, and spoke at the time. There was a particular senior person in government now who was there with him. And we had some discussion, you know, and so on. And that was the only time I, I actually um, spoke with Rosie after, after he became prime minister, which was, which was very, very sad because I yeah. just thought I had time. Mm -hmm. I really thought I had time, so I told him, no, man, I'll have time, come and see you and stuff. Um, but, you know, mm. that's like... Wow, that's so... I Do you feel any sense of regret that you didn't spend sufficient time with him during probably that, that period when he was, you know, after all that hard work and the hard labor that you all did in those communities to get people to believe in what he believed, the vision, I remember, to the election 2000, it was about a vision, wasn't it? Wasn't it about a vision? Um, I, I think so. I don't remember. I think what one, of the, one, of the, one of the, the what do you call it? It's not a mantra, it, but it, it manifesto. Well, yes, I think there was something about a vision. If okay, I if I, I remember, don't, yeah, I don't quite remember. But yeah. I mean, I did I did regret it um to some extent, but at the same mm -hmm. time, I think. Because of my relationship with him, I knew that Rosie knew we were good. So, you know, and then of course my daughter Amanda had opportunities too. He took <laughs> he took Amy one day to, to pass the Bruce. And okay, the child is calling and telling me, Mommy, guess where am I? I say, Where you at? Oh, she's in Castle Bruce. I said, What are you doing, Castle Bruce? Um, Rosie tell me. I said, You went to um, Castle Bruce with Rosie? She said, Yes. Um, on what only when she said, Mommy, I was on the state car. I said, Rosie, would you on the state car? <laughs> So I said, you brought the child to Casper's on the state car. He's a but is the state child, so why she can go on the state car? Exactly. Very good. I like that. He's a state child. And he, he had no he had no no extra style. I mean, state car was just a car to Rosie from what I understand. But Rosie was also very humble. Rosie, I mean, he, he was not bothered about um um you know all of these fancy things and so on. When Rosie met with you, Rosie, we we would go around the country, right? Especially during campaign time and so. Rosie would have a kitchen, go in their port, yes. and he's seeing, and he expected us to do the same thing. So if you see you go in two pieces and in somebody's party, he wants us to go that way. <laughs> and you couldn't because that's not how you, you grew up. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was very, very humble, you know, yes, um, yes. and very generous as well. And so that's why a lot of people came to him. I mean, he... He would give you anything. Rosie could give you the last dollar in his pocket. And his mother always used to say that. She would tell you, um, he would give you the, 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 the clothes on his back. You take it and give it to you if you ask him. Um, so he was really, really generous. But he also did some really important things like 
paying um bills for people especially their health bills um yeah. sending children to school buying mm-hmm. uniforms paying mm-hmm. he would sponsor um he brought he introduced basketball to Kewuch sponsored a lot of groups yeah. I mean, this man just did a he just transformed the community and the people around him and he so he had an impact on almost everybody and it was difficult to get him even when he just came and the communist thing was a strong um you know thing. Yeah. Yes. It was still difficult to hate him because he was a very lovable person. Right. I, you know, it's interesting that you're saying that. Um, my mother is online and she's watching. My, that's Nan and Andrew. And she's saying, Rosie was Father Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and then she says, um, he had the heart of his mother. And my mother yeah. knew them because she worked with his mother um, for them at their home for a period of time and took care of some of them when they were smaller. Um, so she kind of has an idea of, of, mm-hmm. of Rosie. So she says he had the heart of his mother because she also understands the, the nature of um, how his mother was. And then you said something earlier. Well, two things. One was that Rosie held no grudge. And when you said that, it, remind, it reminded me of a lady, a certain lady in Portsmouth. I, I won't call her name. I don't want to put her on the spot. But she clearly was not supporting Rosie's party. And um, every time they met, you know, he accepted the fact that the lady told him once, I will never change two things. One, I will always be Catholic. And two, I will always be a freedom, freedom right. Mm-hmm. And Rosie and that lady were good friends, regardless of mm-hmm. the lady's stance. And there is no way that he would, he would be in Portsmouth and not see that lady and greet her and make jokes with her and laugh. So it's interesting that you said that because that's a memory that I do have um, about him. And then somebody else, Theresa Frege says, I was one who was afraid of what I was hearing about him, um, about communists. And then she said, not after that, I put everything aside and love him. In 1995, I met him and told him he's going to be the next prime minister, even though UWP had just won. I told him next prime minister going to be him. And it really happened. And she says that, and I can be honest with you, like growing up as a little girl, um, I heard those talks about communism too. And in my view, when I heard of Rosie Douglas and Cuba, that was the experience, that was the knowledge. It, that's what we were taught. That's what a lot of us were fed, communists and bad and stay away from such people, etc. So it's, it's so interesting to hear the kind of positive impact that he has had on your life. And I know on the lives of many other people um, in Dominica and in the world really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the important things that Rosie did as well was um, while he was in opposition was that he um, had this arrangement with Cuba to send students to Cuba. And so we actually had to, first of all, to get parents to agree for their children to go to Cuba was a big thing. Yeah. And so we had to spend a lot of time um, explaining and encouraging parents to look beyond what people said about the communist thing and so on. Remember, um, you know, at the back in, in the day, I mean, all people children were not becoming um, doctors and, and lawyers and so on. So that was an opportunity. So we had to, to do a lot of advocacy and, and yeah. you know, trying to encourage people and so on. And when we eventually got people to agree to send it to Cuba, you have to actually smuggle them out of the country as well. Yeah, and somebody's in the middle of the night. We saw. Okay, I mean, weren't you afraid when you were doing those things? <laughs> were you ever afraid? Well, we were, but we we did what we thought was the best thing to do. Wow. So you know, yeah, man, we and it, it, so do you know? Out. Do you do you know some of the people that you smuggled? I mean, do you see them around? Do yeah, man, a lot of them are, of course, these people are, uh, all of them are working, who are doctors, we have dentists, wow. you know, yes, yes, and they can say, they can talk about it, they can talk about the experience. Yes, yes, it's amazing, I had an uncle, he died now, but his name was Cuthbert Andrew, they used to call him Jomo, and I remember that um, he was one of Rosie Douglas's ardent followers and supporters, and he was sent to Libya. I think at some point he loved reading as well. And who knows, maybe Rosie impacted him in terms of um, getting him to be interested in world matters. He had, when he died, he had many, many books. You know, that's one of the things you found about him. He knew a lot of stuff. And I know that he was exposed to Rosie Douglas as well um, growing up. So it, it, it does sound like he, he impacted a lot of people. I mean, you did say that um, being a secretary was not, from what I'm hearing, just sitting in the office and waiting for. Mm-hmm come to you. Not at all. Um, 
for one, because he traveled a lot, um, mm. I had to do a lot of stuff on his behalf. So I had a lot of authority to do things like yes. there were people who would come to Rosie for help and, and especially if you want to go and travel and stuff like that. So I could give the go-ahead for people to travel and, and things. I I had to ensure that especially when there was parliament and he and of course he was like out of state and yes. his um, excuses to parliament went on time reminded him of stuff that especially something's happening on in the country, make sure I get him early enough so that he knows and he can make a decision whether he should come back or if he should, you know, whatever. So but outside of that, we did a lot of organizing of different things. So there was this the, the sports thing, there was the education thing, there was the, the in shows and, and all of those things that we were organizing. And so all of I when I had to to be able to do all of those things as, as his personal secretary. Um, you know, Rosie would travel sometimes and Rosie comes back. Rosie gives me money. Lots sums of money. Yeah. <coughs> I am scared. <laughs> it's yes. a lot of money. Yes. Rosie, you remember I have the money for you? Yes, I'm money. <laughs> Most <laughs> times you don't ask me for the money. I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I but can I imagine. The trust that he had in me. Rosie mm -hmm. gave me the money and he couldn't be bothered. You know, when he's ready, he'll just want, you know, come for his money. <laughs> you know? yeah. And he'd give me to do things that, I mean, just caused me to feel that, okay, I can do it. And, you know, yeah. so it really built me. It really built me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Wow. Uh, <laughs> this is this is so amazing. Um, I remember you said about medical bills, and I do remember that uh, a number of people from even our area, he would go to places like Martinique and Guadeloupe, and mm -hmm. he had a friend named Dr. Makuk, I think. Yes, yes. I don't know if he's probably still alive, by the way, but I know that that person was a direct link with Rosie and yes. he did a lot for Dominique. He or she did a lot for our people um, here because of Rosie's link with that person. Yeah, you're very correct. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people had, um, they went to Martinique um, for, for, for medical help as well, um, you know, and Rosie facilitated all of that, all of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And There's... I mean, it was amazing because he was not, he was not like in government, you know, no. and he did all of those things, you know. There we go. Here he we was go. not in government. That is the perfect seat, um, um, segue. That's exactly what I was about to to venture into. How is it that a man with no, he would, he was old. I mean, he's been trying to get into government for years, but during that time. He never sat still. He always moved the ball. Even, I mean, he was a strong person, clearly, to have had such a quote-unquote stigma placed on you for X amount of years, bad experiences because, you know, of whatever in the past. And to be able to still go outside of your nation and, you could say, try to attract various things for your people, not being in government, I don't know how we did it, but one of the things I believe, and you mentioned it in your bio, is networking. You said you developed a, a network, and I believe that Rosie had a very strong network, and mm -hmm. that is one of the ways in which he was able to to, and not just a network. We can you can you can have a network and be selfish, but, but they, they invested in 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 this. I mean, a lot of people bought into what Rosie was doing, and yeah. so it was easy for them to provide him with support. So he had international support. Um, even the Labour Party itself, even at a time when the Labour Party didn't want to associate with Rosie because they thought it would be um it would be, it would negatively impact their abilities and um to win an election and so on. Yeah. You know um, but he was the one who was bringing in a lot of, of the resources for us to do the campaign. There we go. So, He's bringing in the resources to do the campaign, and yet still, you know, the, the party yeah. said, "No, oh, he cannot go on the on the on the ballot. Um, it will it will spoil our chances and so on." So when he won the elections in 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 um was it 19, 1985? Yeah, he said he suspects because he won the election so strong, he thinks he's able to become the prime minister of the country. Wow! So he, he said had that. foresight. This man was really a strategist. He had foresight as well. Yep. Yep, yep. But I always wondered how is it he became power rep of Paybush and Dodan. And then he had that when we're going up to Dodan, there's a place called Rosie Flower Garden. Unfortunately, it's in not God. anymore in, yeah. in, in that area. Um, in yes, everybody called yes, when we leave one going towards Dodan, everybody call it um Rosie's Flower Garden. But how is it he became power rep of, of that area? How how that happened? Can you do you know? Um I, I cannot say I know, you know, all I know is when he came, he was able to amass a lot of support in the community. And 
I think based on that, he thought he had a strong enough support to cause him to win an election. And so therefore he decided he was going to, to contest the Pilbuchi elections. And yeah. he had a really strong team around him. Mm -hmm. And we worked really hard. And Rosie didn't just work in the Pebush constituency. He worked in other constituencies as well because he was a very influential person. Yeah. So he moved around and he took us around with him. I mean, we would go around. Them. Like when you see you get to, we, when Rosie come, comes to Pebush and you meet him in the morning, <laughs> when we go on that week with Rosie, it's not until 11, 12 o'clock in the night, we're coming back at home. And so he's just telling you, know, let's just reach Benz. But when you oh. get to Benz, we go to Kalibishi, then from Kalibishi, we go to Wesley, from Wesley, and we keep going. And Rosie would talk, Rosie would meet people, he would stop, and you know, oh, it would just go on. And But all of that to me was a learning experience. It was mm -hmm. a learning experience. And you met so many people, you built, you know, friendships, you built nice yes. people. Yes. So it was, and like I said, it was a movement. So, you know, you... and. You got excited, you got excited. Another thing with Rosie was that he, it was not just about politics, it was about culture, it was about building people, it was about education, yeah. everything. Yeah. We would have, he would organize, we would have the youth and he would support us. We, we had trips, we went to Total on boat and it was lots of fun. We traveled yeah. overseas. I mean, you know, he, he, was, was, he, was, a, he was a fun loving person. Yes. I think he cared about people genuinely. Um, and maybe that's why, you know, some people were mad at him because he would give too much um, to a lot of people. One person say, I love Papa Rosie. Um, somebody else is saying, after, the, after that, I love, 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 love Rosie. When he died, my face got swollen um, because I cried like I cried a lot. Um, there is Ruby, Hyacinth, Rubes, Hyacinth, James. She says, post my father sewing school, making baby clothes. Rosie would send every pregnant young girl, I can't believe that, to get their baby clothes yeah. in the sewing school and he would pay for it. Rosie mm -hmm. supported the community. That's just oh, yeah. something. Yeah. That's yeah. He was also very jovial. So you couldn't be around Rosie and not laugh. I would give you yeah. something. You know, a couple of times Rosie would say, um, shoot, I'm on here, I'm on here, I'm on here. Oh, my finger, I'm pull it for me, pull it for me, pull it for me. I pull it one finger, I'm on <laughs> 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 you know, and that upset me, Rosie. And the, you know, the Rosie just do some stupid things. things I mean, yes. you just have to laugh. You just have to yes. laugh. You know, he would sometimes call me, and he'd pretend to be somebody else, like some boyfriend trying to make a little pass at me and stuff, and talk in in a, a strange voice. And think. he didn't even think to pay me, Amy, hang up on him how many times? Even when he was pregnant. He you seems know? like he used to do that to a lot of people because yeah. I heard that his niece is called. Um, the, the, the other week, two weeks ago or one week ago, when they had that program about him, mm -hmm. um, last week, I think it was last week Friday or so. Last Thursday, last Thursday, I think, yeah. Friday, yeah. And she was saying that he would call and say, "This is Barifta," and everybody know Barifta is one of our <laughs> very famous Barifta's in person in Portsmouth. And he would pretend to be Barifta, calling her. Yeah. He knew that she did not want to hear from any Barifta, <laughs> and that was his niece that he used to trouble. So I can really believe, yeah. you know. Some of us are sharing about him. <laughs> it's really good to hear that. It's really good to hear that soft side of somebody painted so badly in the eyes of so many people. Yeah. But I, I'm happy that over time, all people crossed over to a large extent and started accepting and appreciating him and seeing him for who he really was. You know, um, Lester, Lester here is saying he could tell us about the flower garden. Um, maybe one time, Lester, you can tell us a little bit. Um, about it. And there you have a friend, Deborah Francis, who says that you look beautiful, Ammonia. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> She's right? from Baywood. Yes, yes. Um, this one says, my dear, you know the real Rosa Heron. So that's Lester again. So I think Lester understands a lot about who Rosie was as well. Um, mm -hmm. Everything you say about Rosie is true. It's a joy that you know the real Rose, Rosa Heron. Okay, so let's let's move on a little bit. I remember when um, that election came. He chose a rose for his symbol. Do you remember that? I think that was the time. Although I think one of them said to me it wasn't the rose. It was what he said. It was, he told me it was the heart. But there was a time when he wanted to use the rose as a symbol. But I think there was some discussion about not using the rose, and he probably ended up using some other symbol. But that was the time when the the party didn't want him to be associated with them, so he had to basically um, run almost like an independent candidate. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. 
he, he had a lot of hurts too. I mean, clearly, yeah, for you to be working so hard and still, you know, being rejected by some of the very people that you're working hard to must be must have been hurtful. Did he ever show any vulnerable side that you saw that that would make you, you know? No, um, not even when like so. Rosie won the 1985 elections. By 1990, they had gerrymandered our boundaries to remove Dodan from the constituency, and Dodan was a stronghold of Rosie. Yes. And they they um included Kalibishi, that was a stronghold of Jenna. Yes. And so that was to to cause him really? to lose the election. So at that time, he lost the election, and boy, it was it, it hit us hard <laughs> because we really didn't want, you know, we we felt really badly about the loss. Yes. So I mean, Rosie didn't um, it didn't bother Rosie at all. I mean, he just continued. I think for a while he went away and and you know continued his work in, in Africa and so on. Um, but those things never really um hampered Rosie or caused him to have no ill will or anything like that. No, yeah. He didn't care. That's that's really that's really great, and I think there is something about his personality that we can all learn from and try to take that that spirit of endurance, but also the ability to let go of things that so that they don't hold us back, but that we keep pressing on toward whatever um, the goals, the plans are for us. Um, it's been twenty years. I mean, when I ponder on twenty years that you know we lost such a great man and today we are still talking about him i'm kind of concerned about our generation and the, the younger generation who may not have known too much about rosie and um, thankfully there are some things online that people can read granted all may not be as accurate as possible what do you think can happen in in terms of um trying to capture the life of the man so that the next 20 years which would be 40 years Thereafter, young people who uh, would be grown up in Dominica, being exposed to Dominican politics and or um, or history, would know about him. What do you think can be done? I mean, do you think one? Do you think enough is being done to remember such a man? One and two, is there anything you can propose that you're thinking about that should be done really um, in order to? promote and, and preserve that history. First of all, I, I want to acknowledge the fact that this current government has actually named um the the Douglas Charles Airport yeah. on of, of him. Mm -hmm. However, for the kind of person that Rosie was and for the impact that he had on the, the Dominican economy and the, the country and on people in the country, mm -hmm. I think there's still a lot more that we could do to honor his um his memory. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and of course, one of them, as you, you rightly mentioned, would be to capture it as part of our history. And I would really like to see a book written about Rosie, his life, yeah. and so yeah. on. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it, if it, it has, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, biogra um, a biography, but some right. way of documenting Rosie and let it be one of the things that we teach our children. To, because for me, I think, had Rosie not become of the parrot for Pebush, yeah, he. I don't think, well, and that is my personal opinion. I don't think the Labour Party would have ever come into power. I think Rosie was a critical reason why the Labour Party came into power. I remember um, you said that the other night. You said that, and yeah. you said that with conviction, um, yeah. line, you know, on the radio rather. And and I would like to hear why you think so strongly that that is the case. Because for years the Labour Party was in, in opposition and trying to win the elections. And we had some really good leaders like, like Mike Douglas. And yet they were not able to win an election. And yeah. with all of the challenges that Rosie had to overcome, even within the party itself, Rosie took the party to and through an election and we became um we came into power. You know, so I think to me that is major. That is major. Yeah. And I, I don't yeah. think we should overlook it at all. All right. So, so I, I, I think we need to document this in in part of our history and to teach it in the schools, so children mm -hmm. know about the importance of of Rosie. I think even not at a community level, like the communities of Portsmouth and Cambridge, we can do certain things to um teach children, or we could have a night where we come and just do a rap session or something and speak about Rosie, yeah. reminisce, and talk about the stories. We can make it, we can make it nice in terms of you know make it social, social yeah. and so on. But to to make sure that we do not forget, because I don't think we need we should forget Rosie. 
and we yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Um, and clearly, we do have a school at Portsmouth uh, named after him as well, the Roosevelt Douglas yeah. Primary School, which is good. It used to be called for some government school. No, it's called the Roosevelt Douglas Primary. And I do know that that school annually, they try to do some sort of activity that will cause the students to remember um, the late Rosie Douglas. But I'm, I am with you, I'm in agreement with you rather, that there is our community, Portsmouth One, needs to do more about to promote the knowledge, the history of such a man who came from our soil and emerged as, as a prime minister. I mean, let's be real about it. You know, we, it's something we should be really proud about. And as you said, P. Bush, he did a lot for that area as that part of the, the island as well. Um, and so we in the North, we should truly be doing more too. And maybe not just Rosie Douglas, but there are lots of other people who impacted yeah. all history. The Rob the Robelin um waters that you mentioned earlier. Rose Robin is still alive, at least. I don't know why um, I don't Sorry. know. Yeah, she's still there. Ro Ro um, Bodo is still in Pebush, yeah? Is this, yeah, you're right. It's um, yeah. Mr. Lawrence Blumen. Yeah. Yeah. One passed away, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So that was a that was an error there. She's still yeah. alive. Good. So, But mm -hmm. people like this, even before like people like Miss Rebellion Walter dies, I mean, people like this, young people should know who they are and what yeah. they've been doing, what they can do, and what they have been doing over the years, especially as it pertains to our culture. We just lost a cultural icon. Yeah. So, oh my, that was a major loss, huh? Major, major loss. loss. Yes, mm -hmm. great accordionist, Mr. Uh, Mr. Alexis, Crawford Alexis. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, there are lots of people in our part of the island, you could say, and, and in Dominica in general, if we were to broaden it, who we just take for granted. We see them as ordinary people and we take them for granted. And they, the history, the, the country, their contribution to, to the island, I think it's been lost. But to take it, full circle and to come back, you know, um, to Rosie. I personally believe because of the nature of this man, um, more, even in Portsmouth, I mean, there should be, apart from the school, yeah. there should be somewhere that we could I agree. capture the history of this man. And everybody should be able to go to that place and know and see and read. Um, children should be able to write, you know, stories about his life and all of that stuff because they would have been exposed to that kind of history. You know, yeah. it, it makes me though that we don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's I know that it's kind of sad um for you. And I, I believe you're very passionate about um what what Rosie should be seen as. You know, no when when you mentioned that um Pebush is had it not been for Pebush, uh, maybe Labour Party would never be in government. So so but Pebush has been very um, labor affiliated over the years. Um, I, I guess because of Rosie, it started right and moved. Oh, yeah. It never moved really. Have, has it ever moved since then? It never no. moved, except so, that one. Except that one year when they gerrymandered the boundary. Um, yeah. Rosie yeah. lost that year. Two and won, and yeah. the following year, Matthew won the, the yeah. election. And from since then, we able to whenever you come council um, general elections, the first. Yeah. Seat you here is Pebush. And when I, when I speak about Pebush, I mean I'm in Pebush constituency. Eh? Yeah. I don't want to yeah. be of Pebush. I'm in Pebush constituency. Yeah. That includes um Ben's anti Mayor Solder, Kalibichi. Kalibichi, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. So because often when people talk about Labour Party stronghold, I think they talk about um Portsmouth, Grand Bay, you hear of these, you know, and then yeah. the Pebush part seem to kind of get away, maybe because it's it in the background, like it's not important. But to me, I think it was very important. And yes. that's my opinion. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. From what you from what you shared, I mean, it sounds that way to me that Pebush is definitely a, a you could say one of the hubs you could say of, of mm -hmm. the Dominican Labour Party over the years. Um, so Rosie Rosie Douglas, he invested in education. That was a big deal for him. Um, he he invested in empowering people. We have lost some of our doctors who got trained there. I know a number of people from even Portsmouth area. Who went to Cuba and got some level of training and education. Some are practicing, some are not, some have gone abroad, some have died, etc. But one must never forget, you know, what education meant to him. Um, and you, you said it well when you said that, when you told him now nah, you, you're done in school, he said, no, you cannot finish. You have to, and he paid for your college. I mean, that's amazing. 
you said he pinned. But I do know that he invested in other students. I think oh, yeah. I, I think he tried to get scholarships locally for high school students. Do you know anything about that? I think I remember some students getting some kind of assistance. Well, he sponsored a lot of children to go to school, you know. I mean, yeah. he for my college, there was this other um young lady from from Ebu who went to college as well, and he paid for both of us. That was Nanette. Nanette, she's now living in Saint Croix. But right. Rosie paid for a lot of students to, to go to school. He would give you mm -hmm. transportation. Sometimes he paid for your accommodation in town. You know, he went mm -hmm. to, to so even when we went to college, he actually went at the time it was um Rupert Sorendo who was in um the the in charge of college. He went to speak to to Mr. Sorendo and said, "I have two students. I want you know, and he you know." And we would get all entry into to yeah. college. We shall we go there. So he did a lot of that, um, mm -hmm. just from his own personal, from his pocket. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot we can say about this man. Clearly, um, you. I remember your daughter called Amy called the night too, and she did share one or two of her experiences with him. And she was very young, but she, I think, she would have known him all her life because yeah. you said you said just two years after you had yeah. her. You mm -hmm. encountered Rosie, and from then he was always in in yours um life. Yeah, the special mm -hmm. relationship. I mean, Rosie became almost like a father to Amy because every every school year, once she brought in her report card, she got her trip to travel to, to yeah. wherever she went. Yeah. You know, and they had a really great relationship. And sadly, he he passed away on her birthday. So yeah, I remember she oh, said, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, that day, that's a that's a really sad one because. When yeah. she's enjoying her birthday, she has to remember the love mm -hmm. somebody yeah. so dear to her. Yeah. yeah. And then and then you get married to some you get married to somebody who is who is birthday is a day after his yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know that, but what it is, what it is there. Yeah. yeah. So um okay, so you did mention that you would be happy if if more can be done. And you said somebody should write a book about Rosie Douglas. I, I agree. I don't know who's going to do it. Um we don't and there are many people who have not yet spoken about their interactions with Rosie that have a lot of stories to tell too, you know. Yeah. I mentioned some of them like Nathan and Morgan and, right. and you know, a lot of these people, I mean, everywhere you saw Rosie, you saw Nathan. So Nathan Banis is a person that can tell you lots and lots of stories. Yeah, that's what I remember. That's what I remember um, Nathan. Yeah, he drove Rosie it. everywhere. Right. Because then, 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 Rosie... Rosie yeah. was a person. Rosie would be talking, and he's, and um, he's, you know, he's, he's all over the place. When you see Rosie get into the vehicle, you're talking to Rosie, and one minute Rosie, oh, Rosie's snowing. Rosie's snowing. <laughs> always tired. Tired, so he couldn't drive. So he always had Nathan driving. Yeah, Lester Bellon is saying that he used to stop there. He used to stop there and drink water. I guess that was by the flower garden. I think. Uh, um, yes, and it is so there, yeah. Yes, and then he said I was his personal driver. He loved the flowers there. And then he says that there was a, I second that, there was a lady in Dodan. She was a banis, older lady. She was a great inspiration to Rosie. Um, so I maybe it's Nathan's, do you think it's Nathan's mother or sister or something? I don't know if he's referring to Madela. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, there was this this um and she was a really nice lady, so we all got you know really close to her. Mm -hmm. Um she, she lived, lived very long. Yes, yes. Her name we call her Madelom. I don't know, I don't remember her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't remember her name, but I do remember the name Madelom. I do remember she said that every night she drank bush tea on sweet and yeah. the bed. So that is something I never I never forget because I like bush tea. And then she said yeah. she drank it without she, she used to drink it without sugar. Because when they asked her, well, how you live so so long, that was one of the things that she said. Mm -hmm. So you had a relationship with elders. And I think Every, said, young, old, not yeah. so old, everybody. Yeah. And yeah. one of the things he did as well was Rosie went to all the churches. So every Sunday, mm -hmm. Rosie went to somewhere. Really? He did not have a around that he wouldn't go to. Yes. And that is how we got close to the people in the Adventist church. Rosie took Adventist church regularly, regularly. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> he goes to church, and after church, he go and visit people. They stay outside and talk and whatever. Mm -hmm. Rosie mm -hmm. just goes in, you know, I mean, you go, how would you not love a man like that? Yeah, true. I think he was fearless. I said it before, but I said on the premise that I was watching a documentary about him um, some time ago, and there was a part where they were speaking when he came from from uh, Canada, and he went back to his father's, uh, you know, estate in mm -hmm. Hampstead, and some of the people were working there, 
there were things that he would do that would anger his father. Oh, like yes. Helping, like helping these people, um, ensuring that they had a lot more than... Good pay. Yes, good, they had good pay. He really mm -hmm. used to advocate on their behalf. So that was really a man of love, I think. A man yeah, and he actually wanted them to get pieces of them. He thought that they should have given them land because for, yeah. for how long they stayed with the working of the father, he thought they should have had land and there should right. be some land reform on the, on the estate and, and you know. Things of that sort. Yeah. Well, I want to challenge you. I think you should put your experience with Rosie in writing. <laughs> I'll think about it. <laughs> I know you have a lot doing. I mean, when I look at your bio, I can tell your hands are filled. Oh. I mean, four years in St. Lucia ran very quickly for you. Yeah. I, I don't know when you went up there, and it's nice to have you back. I'm just saying, it's nice that you're home. It's um, but, bad, you know? mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure it is. But but I'm just saying that I think you should consider maybe documenting your personal experiences with this great individual who has touched the lives the life and the history of Dominica from your perspective. Lester is saying he agrees, and, I, and I'm sure all the people on the chat tonight <laughs> are saying that they agree that maybe you should, I think you should, and maybe you will tap into the resources of the Morgans and the and the Nathans and um, Uticus and all these people whose name you, names you mentioned earlier. They too could share with you their perspective and you could maybe capture that. But I think your experience and that of your daughters is sufficient enough, are sufficient enough to, to give us some perspective um, in a succinct manner that, that young people can pick up and read and say, wow, okay, so I read this about him over there. Look, look what this person is saying about him. Um, that is your experience with him. I think it's different. It's unique to work for somebody as a secretary for over 10 years. It's not anything to take for granted. You have inside scoops that nobody else does, you know, as it pertains to his personality. And you know, one of the things too I, I that um I admired about Rosie too was I could tell Rosie when I disagree with him on certain things. And I mean he wouldn't think that I out of place or you know, who am I? I would argue with Rosie like, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. we're the same level and he would listen and think it's not that he would always agree with me, but I would tell him when I disagree with him and and especially when at the constituency level when we had our meetings and so oh yes, we had to we used to have some heavy debates and stuff, you know, arguments and whatever, you know. And when we're done, we go and we, we cook up or we, you know. And, you know, it you just felt like you were part of a, a movement, you were part of something that was important and you, you had a contribution to make, your contribution was valid, you know. Yeah. And that is what he, what he did, that's what he did. All right. So so I'm hoping that you'll consider it. Lester is giving you a suggestion. Right. Right. The that's right. <laughs> And and from and you can call it the Churrosy Douglas from, from Amonia Paul's perspective. I mean, I can add the rest to that. So so consider consider doing I'll that. I think about it. I'll think about it. <laughs> Don't think too long. Don't think too long, like how long it took you to go and visit him as a prime minister. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not making light of this, okay? But I'm just saying, um, yeah, it's it's serious. I really think you should consider it. Um, is there anything else you would like to share about, about Rosie um, that folks should know? Um, well, I think I said a lot about him. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the impact he had on us is not just unique to us alone, because I think throughout the, the, the world, Rosie yeah. impacted quite a lot of people, not just in Dominica, across mm -hmm. the world, across the globe. Um, through my interactions with him, I met with some really important people, you could say, some influential people. Um, there were people from Ghana. I remember this gentleman called Yao Akrasi Sapong that I met. I met with Peter Cook, who worked for the High Commission. I met with so many people, and, and these are, are very influential people. I mean, were good people that you could never and who could provide you with support and so on. Um, so that is who he was. And I think his impact is not just, it was not just in Domi, it was not just local, it was global. Um, and there's a lot that we could emulate from him. Yeah. Um, I will always give him credit for being a very good mentor um, mm -hmm. and positively changing my life. And I credit a lot of what, who I have become to the influence yeah. he had on me. And so I am grateful for that. That's great. That's great. I think you started the book there. You know, that, that was like the preface, truly. <laughs> Lester is saying thank you very much to you about, um, not Lester, but um, Theresa, but Lester is saying 
uh, write that book. I'll support you. So you have support already coming through. Um, so I really, really think you should, Miss Paul, at Mrs. Rule. I want you to consider it because that is that is um, history for us. But I would love to read it personally. I personally would just from what you've shared. And I think once you start writing, a lot more of the experience. Will come, yeah. yeah, exactly. They will come, and and um, people will be amazed at who he truly was. Um, what I do hope, though, is as you said. That is that we as a community and, and a nation can really try to capture and promote um, among our younger generation some of the, the characteristics, I would say, and the qualities of the man that he was so that we ourselves can continue to be a caring community. I picked that up from about him. He was caring. He loved people. Oh, yes. um, and so we too need to love people and reach out more to people and not be all about us grabbing for us but not thinking about the next person the person next door how we can help them so so i really appreciate that you shared that um today um just to before you go though i mean you're back home and you've started i i see in your bio that you've started um at work immediately it's like you never left so so what's that going for you <laughs> um it's good to be back home um mm -hmm. Some things have changed, so I am settling in, um, familiarizing myself with some of the new priorities and stuff. Um, yeah. but it's always exciting to be home. And for me, work has always been a joy. I always love what I do, so it, doesn't, it never feels like work. It never, ever feels like work. I, I think I've been very fortunate to always be in a position where when I go to work, I enjoy it so much that it doesn't feel like work. Um, not that there's no enjoy no pressure or whatever but mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it um so i look forward to continuing um and there are lots of things in, in you know of my yeah <laughs> on my plate I'm, <laughs> so yeah, because i'm looking at the the ministry that you're working in i mean it has all these different arms it has economic affairs planning resilience sustainable development mm -hmm. um and then of course you're you're focused on um the country poverty assessment project um no no that was what you did before that was what I did in, um, right in yeah. right but now you are let's see i'm trying to get it i'm the social development planner right social development planner yeah mm -hmm. so that too i mean especially now in 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 the thrust that to the, the government has working towards what is called the dynamic dominica um a resilient dominica <laughs> resilient dominica post maria and all of that and then creed with what Creed is as well, Creed is, is doing as well. So your hands must be very filled. So I know you can do what you do. You have a lot of experience on, on your hand. I mean, remember you being a district development officer back in the day and doing a lot of things that, you know, cause us to know your name, so to speak. So your, your experience of before and your knowledge now and experience truly has a lot more to offer our nation. Who knows? Have you ever thought about walking in the footsteps of Mr. Douglas towards um, politics? Actually, you know, actually, I loved politics so much that I really look forward to representing, um, you know, being in, 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 in parliament. Yeah. Um, and for many years, like, the constituency thought that I would have been the best pal rep for 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 Pebush, but <laughs> after a while, <laughs> after a while, I I the the um attraction that that politics had for me kind of dissipated a bit when the reality is sinking when I understand what it is to be in politics. Yeah. And, um. So a couple of times when I I was asked um, whether I you know um, I was I I, I declined I okay. I thought. Um, it wasn't the right time, mm -hmm. and even though it's not that as an attractive, I think um, the passion that I have for working with people and empowering people, it doesn't necessarily have to be political. So sure. um, I mm -hmm. think what I'm doing, especially in the line of my work, I think that is important enough. So yes. the power thing, I, I like Rosie. It doesn't. It's not. It does not appeal to me. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, I rather do what I'm doing, and I rather touch people's lives in ways that not public. So, do you, do you think um, politics has, uh, well, I know everything changes all the time, but how do you compare, how do you see politics in the time of working with Rosie and helping him to put his strategy in place to today? It was, 
I think it was enjoyable. Even with the campaigns when you know we we campaigning against um you know freedom and stuff. It was it was it was fun. It was fun. Um, but it has changed, and I think you you've seen a bit of of violence introduced in, in the, the political yeah. campaign. Yeah. Um, yeah. and even with with the, the um a lot of things in 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 the in the background has changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about it first. So yeah, I get you. I, I get you. I don't find it attractive. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I think it has evolved in some very ugly ways in, in certain aspects of the politics, certainly. Um, I think in the days of uh, Rudy Douglas, he could laugh. Um, and laughter is very is key in politics. But I think when politics starts going into the realm of hatred and, and internet... It's, it's and, really nasty, so I... Yeah. yeah it's so I'd rather, yeah. Mm -hmm. So but I understand the importance of politics, right? I understand the importance and so on. And there are people who are caught for it, so let them do it. Yes. Um, there are those of us who can do, do be as effective and True. probably do even much more um, without all of the glamour and and you know yeah. and stuff. So True. so for me, I think that is where I you know I think I can make my contribution. So I'm doing it there. All right. Well, that's that's appreciated. But who knows? Maybe later that might change. But who knows? I know. <laughs> So anyway, Pauline J. Douglas says to me, Cousin C's, you are related to the late Prime Minister by blood. Ask your mom for the bloodline connection. connection. Yes. Well, actually, I do know that. I, I, I was told that by my mommy. And, mm. um, and, and Rosie Douglas' siblings, they all, well, a lot of them, especially Jacqueline and uh, Irma, who know my mommy very well, um, they... They tend to remind me that we are related, and oh. so, yes. And my mom worked there with them, so she she kind of shared with me the connection with our bloodline. I hope I can remember, but it has to do with my mother's mother. Um, on all on my mother's mother's side, they related. Um, I think with her mother, with um, Rosie's mother. Yes. So oh, cool. that connection. Yes. Wow. Um, and I like to see that Pauline is saying the book about him will be available next year, 2021. And of that's course, true. Pauline, I look forward to that copy. So yeah, that's so to get mine too. That's right. And the more books, the better. Because, yep. because, yep. because your perspective is your perspective. And it would be great to, to even see the, com the comparisons, you know, when, when someone can read what you've written about him and read what Pauline and maybe whoever else with the Douglas family are working on to to bring about him. I mean, I heard some lovely stories about him from his own family during the time of his of his death. And every, every so often when folks remember him, um, we hear of their stories as family, the intimate um, family connection. And one of the things that I always remember, and it, I try to practice it when I drive, is that I think one of his sisters, and it was probably do, um, Sister Pat, she has no, no died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, yes. Patricia Douglas, Sister Pat, she was a Clooney sister. I remember once she was talking about it and she said that whenever he picked up in the in the airport, whenever they were traveling, he would always play music that he thinks that she would like. So he would not be selfish about the music yeah. that he played. He would play music that he knows the person who is with him will enjoy. Yeah. I never, never forget it. And yeah. it's something that I try to practice in my own travels as oh. well as the people up on the road. So I have my little memories about, about um, this man as well. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, I can say thank you. I really want to say thank you to you for taking the time out to share with us about your own experience. And I know you could not speak about everything here tonight. Yeah. Yes. But it's good to have um, taken the time out to remember the late Roosevelt Rosie Douglas, um, a man from our soil. He had an infectious smile. Um, whenever he smiled, you you it really pulled people in. Um, I don't think he really used to get vexed. I don't know if he ever seen him get vexed, but I can't remember, you know, seeing him vexed. He always laughed, he always smiled. Mm. I have faint memories of him like during Pam Pampo's death. Um, he was right up front I, at the funeral and I was chairing that function. So I cannot remember little things like this about my experience with him and seeing his pleasant face, right? So um, I want to thank you for taking the time out to help me and others here remember um, some of the wonderful things that Rosie Douglas has done and who he was and to really look to promote 
um, and to capture his history so that all generation and the younger ones can get to know him um, going forward. So maybe your final remarks that you'd like to offer? Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to share some of my reflections on my journey with Rosie and how he impacted my life. Um, it was this is the very first time that I am having that opportunity, so I really appreciate it. Um, and like you said, there are so many things I could say about Rosie, but it, we can't say all in one, you know, it would take us a lot of time <laughs> to talk about everything. Yes. Um, but I do appreciate the time and I hope people um, have learned a bit more about who the man was. Sure. Sometimes you see somebody dressed in a, a jacket and tie, but Rosie was a person and he was a lovable, yeah. jovial, friendly, you mm. know, kind of person. Yes. So. Thanks. Yeah, so that. I'm happy to say, I, and my final, final thing that I will say about Rosie, my mommy said when we were small, he used to come up to Zika area. He had some friends up there and he had a buggy, an old van, and he used to take all of us little children and put us at the back of the van. 44, a brown Ford because. <laughs> <laughs> and he used to take us on the van. We would all be at the back of the van and we would say, yeah. Rosie old truck or something like that, Rosie boggy van or something. Yeah, he loved children. Mm -hmm. Yes, and he yeah. loved the children. That was yeah. that's a signature about him. He really loved yeah. children. So it's really good. And thank you once again. I appreciate you and wish you all the best in future endeavors as well. Thank you, Cesarina. Thanks. Well, <laughs> and good night, everybody. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Indeed. So yes, folks, um, thank you so much. Um, yeah, you had Mrs. Amonia Paul Roll sharing her own experience about our dear Rosie Douglas. And if you don't know about him, I, I urge you to, you know, go ahead and try to find out a little bit more. Maybe you can Google his name and you will read different things. Google his photos. It might lead you to certain picture and uh, stories about his life, some positive and maybe some of what um, may have been written from um, negative perspectives or biased perspectives. But it's good to know the man, and you heard a lot about him tonight from somebody who was very close to him, who knew him better than a lot of us, and who has personal experiences, and who attributes success to a large extent to his impact on her life. So I urge you young people to look for people who will build you, um, community people, let's look for people who will lift us up and not bring us down. With that, I say thank you, all of you for joining us tonight and do have a splendid weekend. Let us go and remember, let us be cautious through COVID. Let us exercise the various protocols that have been given to us by our health professionals. Have a great weekend. Find a place to worship, to worship God and go with God. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Good night, bye-bye. <laughs> Yeah, uh, here we go.